Welcome to part two of what is a balance sheet. Last time we looked at the basic structure and components of a balance sheet. Today we're going to get into more detail and look at an actual example. Before we get into the details, I just want to briefly recap a couple of points we made last time, which is that on a balance sheet, the assets must balance or be equal to the sum of the liabilities and equity. That in fact is the formula for a balance sheet, assets equal liabilities plus equity. And it's structured that way because the liabilities and equity are what fund the assets or support the value of the assets. Well, let's dive down into the details now of this balance sheet. We'll start with the assets section at the top. And I want to point out, first of all, that a balance sheet is as of a particular date in time. It does not cover a period of time. It's as of a certain date. Top left, you see an indication here that this is a CAS cash basis um, accounting. And if you're using QuickBooks, it will always say either cash basis or accrual basis up here. I'll get into that in a separate video. For now, I just wanted to point that out. Back to the balance sheet itself, and we'll look at first the two categories of assets. First are current assets. Those are assets uh, that will normally be uh, converted into cash within one year and in the normal course of business. The other category are fixed assets, and those are long-term tangible property the law firm owns and uses in its operation and uh, is not expected to be consumed or converted into cash any sooner than at least one year's time. All right, the first item we see under the current assets is the firm trust account. This is sometimes called the IALTA account. And this is very uh, important to note. Uh, one thing I want to do is show you the liability section kind of superimposed here. And you'll see there's a corresponding entry uh, in the liability section for the trust account. And you'll also notice that they match exactly. Now, it's important to know with trust accounts, first of all, that they should balance to the penny, matching the asset with the liability. Also, they're not really owned by the law firm. They're just reported on the balance sheet so they can be tracked. And because of that, they could overstate the leverage of the law firm. If a new lender is looking at your balance sheet, you want to make sure that you point out that you don't actually own that asset. You're just reporting it. All right, back to the balance sheet itself. Next, we notice the firm has an operating account here. That's the law firm's checking account. Uh, we also see that there are advanced client costs listed here under other current assets. And these are case expenses that the law firm has advanced on behalf of its clients. I want to pause here to point out a couple of important issues when it comes to case expenses. First of all, case expenses are an asset not an expense. And so therefore, as an asset, case expenses belong on the balance sheet, not the income statement. So you should not be expensing your case expenses. Uh, you should be booking them as an asset on your balance sheet. Uh, and that's not just my opinion. That's what the IRS says. There's a private letter ruling, 8246013. I'll just show you the heading here. And uh, one of the quotes from it is that advances operate as loans, and they should not be uh, booked as current year expenses. All right, back to the balance sheet. Uh, we now see the fixed assets section, and in here we have some computer equipment, some office equipment, and you'll notice that they are offset partially by accumulated depreciation. Uh, I will get into depreciation in a separate video. We'll just pass over it for now. All right, one thing you don't see on the balance sheet and should not see are future fees. The future fees that may be earned on contingent fee contracts are not receivables because the fees have not been earned yet. So they should not be on the balance sheet. They may uh, appear on your cash flow forecast. Uh, if you don't do a cash flow forecast, stay tuned because I'll do a separate video on that as well. All right, let's jump down to the bottom section of the balance sheet. We'll start with the liabilities. You'll notice there are two sections, current and long term. A current liability is an, a liability that is owed and due within one year. And a long term is something that's not payable for any shorter than one year. We also see on the liability section the bank operating line of credit. That's just the standard line of credit you might hit from a bank. We see here again the trust account liability that we noticed earlier. Uh, and here we have some payroll related liabilities. If you use QuickBooks, even if you're using cash based accounting, you will see payroll entries here because QuickBooks uh, books them uh, as a payable as if it was an accrual basis for payroll. Now, down to the long-term liabilities, we have a couple loans from partners. Those are probably loans that the partners did either at the startup of the firm or sometime during the operation. Those are long-term notes payable to the law firm partners. And jumping down to equity, we have two entries here. First is retained earnings, and those are profits from pre uh, prior years that have accumulated over time in the law firm. And then we have net income below that, which is the current year's 
net income. Okay, well, I'm going to superimpose once again the asset section with the total liabilities and equity section and point out once again how those balance to the penny uh, because that is in fact uh, once again the formula for a balance sheet. Assets equal liabilities plus equity. Well there you have it, how to read and understand a balance sheet. Stay tuned for my next video in which we'll begin looking at an income statement. Thanks for watching. Send your questions or comments to Michael at mike at howdavidbeatsgoliath.com.